Hey guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about what is the difference between medical billing and medical coding. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. I have been a medical coder for over 10 years. I really love sharing the things that I know with all of you. So I hope you'll take a second, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and at the end of this video helps you, I hope that you will share it. So let's get started. Okay, medical billing and coding. It's the same thing, right? Nope. <laughs> These are two separate different functions. Can the same person perform both tasks? Yes, but uh, it is often done by two different people. Medical billers are processing paperwork and working with insurance companies and patients. Medical coders are looking at documentation and making sure that everything supports the codes and the um, diagnoses and the procedures that are selected. And they work with di directly with the providers most times, okay? They work with directly with the providers. We have no patient contact whatsoever, okay? Not even about documentation, we do not. So it all depends on what you want to do. As medical coders, you have to have more technical knowledge like about the disease process and about the the procedures and things like that, we have to have more technical knowledge about the rules on that side. The billers, uh, their technical knowledge lies with the insurance companies and working with them. So that's the difference between the two. Uh, do you, how do you know which, <laughs> which to go with, right? A lot of times in medical coders, if they can't get started in the industry right away in medical coding, they will often be billers first. And this will give them a good, uh, reality about what goes on with medical coding uh, really quick even though they're not technically applying codes that's on the coders but they are seeing what the process is and i think you know medical billers that transition into coding i think are great because you're bringing the billing side of the house knowledge with you when you are becoming a medical coder and i think that's a good thing but there are there are downfalls on that as well because billers are gonna think like billers and coders are gonna think like coders and coders do not code based on money, okay? That is the big thing. We do not code based on money, we code based on what is there. Not saying that the billers are doing that, <laughs> um, but I'm just saying that billers are often looking at, well, what is this insurance company saying and what is this insurance company saying, that kind of thing. So it really all depends on what you want to do. The billers do not have to be certified, okay? Yes, there are some credentials for billing. Uh, with AAPC, they have the uh, CPB, which is a Certified Professional Biller. This, I think, comes in handy if you have your own billing company. Now, there are some billers that have their own company. Do I think it's helpful if you have a CPB behind your name? Yes, if you're not certified some other way. I think it's great if you have a CPB because this shows whoever you're trying to get a contract with uh, that you've, you've had some sort of formal education and that you know, you've been trained, okay? Uh, and I think that that's, it goes a little bit more for reassurance as well uh, for whoever you're billing for. Uh, when it comes to being a coder, of course, if you wanna be a coder, you have to be certified through AHIMA or AAPC the American Health Information Management Association, or the American Academy of Professional Coders. You have to have one of those credentials. Now, there are other credentials out there that I have not seen. When I'm doing uh, job listing reviews, and I do job listing reviews occasionally for different positions and what credentials are they asking for, never once have I seen them ask for the CBCS, which is the other credential that's out there. Um, I don't see that request for that credential a lot, ever. I, I personally have never seen it. Um, and I know it's part of the program, but some people are asking me if this is sufficient enough to start as a medical coder. And it's it's not. You need to be certified with a HEMA or AAPC. And that's what they're looking for. And if you don't believe me, just, just take a gander at the medical coding job listings in your area, okay? Uh, and what else can I say about the differences between the two? Uh, like I said, on the billing side, you're working with the patients and you're working with the insurance companies. 
on the uh, coding side, you're working with the providers. <laughs> and believe me, that gets to be a handful. Uh, sometimes some coders don't have any contact with the providers at all, which I think is a huge travesty. Uh, but it just depends on what the situation is at their facility. Sometimes it has to go through just one person. All the communication goes through like a clinical documentation improvement specialist, or it'll go through a supervisor or a lead. Uh, that's okay, but it just depends on how engaged the provider and that person is, okay? I am of the belief that it's better if the coder is communicating directly with the provider, but that is just me. <laughs> I am very hands-on and I am very engaged when it comes to my work. So I don't allow anybody <laughs> to talk to my providers without me knowing what's going on because any, any other influences can change the way that they are documenting. And when you, they have been trained and trained well, at least that's in my opinion, when I'm training them, I'm doing all the research before I go to them to do any sort of updates um, to anything. And I, and I want to make sure that all of my information is correct and making sure that they're documenting as appropriate, you know, uh, and that is just me being hands on with them. With billers, they can be hands-on in a very good way by being proactive with their research when it comes to the insurance companies. And you can find out different information about different insurance companies because as they say, the rules with insurance change all the time. Uh, you can reference their websites and see what information they have out. You can see the latest. Uh, you can also go to cms.gov. That's the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. They have the uh, Medicare Learning Network, which is a free resource. This is a very valuable resource for both billers and coders, okay? And again, like I said, it is free. It is an awesome resource and it's printable. You can download and you can read it on your own time, but it is a very highly recommended read. At least that is my opinion on it. <laughs> and I, you know, I just want to share that with you guys because I think it's important that when you have all of this information, that way you know what you want to do. Sometimes people will ask me, well, should I be a biller or should I be a coder? It really does depend on what you wanna do. If you wanna try and see about, about getting a job as a medical coder or try and see about getting a job as a medical biller first, so that way you can check it out and see which you would like to do, right? Um, I have a lot of day in a, a day in the life of a medical coder videos. So that way you can see what my day is like. Um, sometimes my day is not typical. It is not a typical day uh, for many coders, but it is a typical day for me. And I am very hands-on, like I said, and I am very engaged with my providers, which helps me in the long run because I'm able to get through their documentation much more quickly and I'm able to make sure that they're getting full credit for everything that they're doing. There's a difference. Um, sometimes coders don't know that they can do this. It took me a long time <laughs> to know that I could do this. So there's, there's going to be the differences there is, and how engaged you are is really huge. Okay. And that's going to go hand in hand with anything that you do. And I, I always say, if you're going to do anything, go all the way, you know, don't go halfway. You know, if you're going to try to learn billing, learn it. If you want to learn coding, learn it. Uh, and a lot of times people will ask me, Hey, I'm in school right now for medical coding and they're trying to teach me medical billing. Do I really have to do the billing? No, I've been in this industry for over 10 years and never once have I done billing. Uh, could I learn it? Sure. You know, but I think I can learn anything if I put my mind to it. Okay. So, <laughs> You know, that is uh, my thoughts on that one. It's, I can only speak about the coding side of the house that I think it's a lot of fun. I'm sure billers have a good time too uh, because they can work independently. You know, they can, they can do their own practice. They can do that. Uh, but it is about learning the rules of the insurance company. So there's, there's a lot of technicality to that as well. But I think if you're really good um, and studious, Biller, uh, I think you can do a lot of good um, for for whoever you're you're working with. Okay, uh, the same thing with coders. If you are very studious and you continue to learn and you learn the rules 
and you understand the rules because knowing the rules and understanding the rules is two separate things, okay? It's just like book coding and real world coding. <laughs> Again, it's two different things because sometimes not all the same words are going to be used and you, you have to know what you're looking at in order to make full sense of it. Same thing on the billing side of the house. You have to know the forms and you have to know how to make sure that they're properly filled out and, and correctly submitted and things like that. Because if a, a billing error, if it's not being submitted correctly, that can potentially lead to a financial loss for that provider, for that facility, and on and on and on. Or it can potentially lead to the the patient having to pay out more than they need to because maybe a credit wasn't updated to their account or whatever. So it's going to take people who are very detailed to be on both sides of the house. And this is not a field for people who are just wanting to do anything ho-hum and, and whatever. You have to be very detailed. It's, it's going to take somebody very conscientious doing these functions in order for this to be successful. Uh, there's a lot of times that you'll hear like about errors and things like that costing people. And, it, and what we do touches so many people. It touches the facility, it touches the provider, it touches the patient most of all. And then it touches the coder because or the biller. Because if things are not being run properly, money's being lost and all of a sudden they don't need as many employees. Okay, so always make sure that if you are doing either side of the house or both, uh, that you are paying very close attention and that you are keeping yourself up to date with all of the latest changes. Okay, and there's a lot of industry um, uh, articles out there, a lot of journals and things like that. Uh, Ahima has the wonderful <laughs> uh, Journal of Ahima. They have that. Um, I'm sure APC has their publication as well. Um, On the Record is another one. It's a really good publication and it's free. So it, it's it's on you to be very proactive and make sure that you are educating yourself all along the way okay <laughs> but yes that is what i have to say about that like i said i can only speak about the coding side and i really love the coding side but it's really entirely up to you some people really love the billing side i've i've heard of that um i mean <laughs> it's it's like i said it's entirely up to you but I think that if you do your research that you should be able to find out which you like, okay? And then sometimes you're not going to know until your boots on the ground. So you may have to try at a billing company, you know? Uh, like I said, you don't have to be certified for that. And you can go in with your high school diploma or a GED and see if they're, if they're doing any hiring. And if they are, at least this way you have time to learn. And then if you're studying to be a medical coder at the same time, at least you're getting more of a faster education, <laughs> more of a real world education than anything else. You know, if you're doing both of those simultaneously, I've known people who have done both simultaneously. And they said that it was a good thing. It was like, a, it was like a boot camp. It was like learning, uh, hands on, you know, so. That's it. That's, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. So uh, I know this was short and sweet, but <laughs> uh, one other programming reminder, I will be um, uploading videos. So you guys will have videos next week. So from the 9th through the 15th of August, I will be uh, taking a break. Okay, so everything's fine, but I will be taking a break during this time. You will still have your regular episodes at 730. Uh, PM Monday through Friday Central Standard Time and but I won't be on the premieres uh, I will get back to you if you email me but it may not be right away okay so just want to let you guys know that uh, if you don't hear back from me it's not because uh, I'm ignoring you it's just because uh, I'm just taking a time out okay so I'm gonna wrap this one up if you are a medical coder, a medical coding student, somebody curious about the fascinating world of medical coding, a provider or a nurse, I invite you to like and subscribe and follow me on my journey in medical coding. I will see y'all next time. Bye.